In this video, we're gonna talk about Gunslinger Spawn is not running anymore. No more running. Gunslinger Spawn turns the tables. Alrighty then, this is a comic book review of Gunslinger Spawn issue number 32, brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. So previously in Gunslinger Spawn, learning that one of his old adversaries still lives, Gunslinger Spawn seeks to learn more about his business dealings. So him and that girl are in the bank, the girl from the previous issues, and they're talking to the bank teller, and she's thinking that they're married, that's their cover, that's their disguise, that's what they're going with. So she asks him, how's marriage life? Because my boyfriend and I are about to get married, but I want to know how you guys are doing. So they're like, it's cool, it's all right, says Gunslinger Spawn, even though he's hot here in the moment. She's like, glad to hear that. So what brings you guys in here today? How do you want to invest your money in this bank? And Javier is like, I like to keep my thing simple. Here's my money. I like to give it to you. Now do your thing. And she's like, okay, that's quite a unique way of doing finances. And Gunsicker's Bond girl, even though she's pretending to be his girl, his wife, she just tells her, look, playing the role, playing the cover, like, look, my husband is a bit of a hoarder and he doesn't fully trust financial institutions. Isn't that right? I like my cash. You know, that's what he says. So the banker signals her boss and he comes in like, hey, you know, my name is Wilbur. I'm the manager of this branch. Thanks for coming in. I can assure you that your money is going to be just fine. It's in the safest thing here now. Mary, the bank teller, will go through some accounts and she'll let you know what options are available to you and what's suitable to you. Or you guys can decide on that. And Gunstick responds, I can take care of myself. And so the thing is, and this guy's like, I'm sure that's true, but our security will help keep an eye on things, all right? And Gunstick responds, starting to get tensed up, like, I don't need no damn authorities. So as the guard approaches, Javi tenses, then reaches for his knife. And she's playing gracefully, like, hey, hey, you know what? Easy there, baby. Easy. It's okay. And she tells him, do you mind giving my husband and I a few minutes? I'd like to speak with my husband if that's okay. So they're like, of course, we'll part ways. We'll come back in a few. And she's like, are you freaking nuts? You bought a damn butcher knife? Are you freaking crazy? And, and Javier's like, I want to know who owns this business, that's all. And she's like, yeah, but pulling out a knife in front of security is not going to get you the answers, my boy. I mean, I'll get you what you want. You just got to keep your damn mouth shut. There's a best way to go about it, and that way is kindness. Javier is like, hell no, I want some smoke, just like them previous issues. So the bank assistant returns minutes later. His undercover wife is like, we really appreciate all the info you've given us. And all I want to say is how wonderful of a business you guys have here. And your owner must be very proud. And the bank is like, oh my God, he's a great boss. He's very caring. He has a nice office upstairs. And Javier ain't got no finesse, ain't got no drip. Well, he's got drip, but he ain't got no finesse on this. He's just telling her, come on now, let's go upstairs. I'd like to meet him. Hold up, I'm sure he'll like that, says Bank Taylor, but he's not in today. He's got a big ranch over in the Culver Cliff area, probably relaxing with his family. And Javier's like, well, let's go then. And his pretend wife is like, okay, what he means is he likes to think things over. I mean, and the bank teller's like, okay, I understand, because this is a very big decision to make where you want to put your finances. Well, let us give you some literature so you can read up on it. And Javier's like, reading, I like that a lot even though we know he don't. So they get outside and his pretend wife is like, you are really a smooth operator, aren't you? And Javier's like, I didn't understand a single thing she was saying. I must be too thick in the head for them fancy bank folks, but I got what I needed. And Javier's looking at her like, what, what something wrong with you? Is something wrong? Everything is. You didn't tell me you were bringing a freaking knife in the bank. And what you said, all you told me is that you wanted information, not to go gun ho on anybody. Well, I brought my knife, says Javier, because, you know, for protection. And I also brought more. She's like, you brought more? Yeah, a pistol, some daggers. And she's like, hell to the no, I'm done with you. I can't stand, bruh. So she leaves and she's like, I'm sticking my neck out for you. And I'm done sticking my neck out for you. I've dealt with enough of this bull jive in my life. I'm sick of it. You macho men always hiding behind your stupid weapons. And Gunslinger responds like, yo, I can't hear you. The, you know, the window's not open. Don't play dumb with me. Wait a minute, actually, are you that dumb? You don't know how to roll down the window? Press the button down. And Javier's like, sorry, I can't hear you. This, you know, your voice is kind of muffled. Press the window down, but she's so frustrated and so mad at him that she just says, forget, I hope you suffocate in that damn car. And Javier's like, damn, I can't hear you. She must be mad at me like a hornet's nest. So as she storms away, Javier feels bad that she's upset. So he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a wad of cash as she's crying on the bench. He goes up to Linda. I couldn't think of her name. That's why I kept calling her pretend wife. I brought you some flowers. You don't deserve to get caught up in my stuff, all right? It's not fair to you, not after all the kindness you show me, but you know, I'm just a hothead. So forgive me, all right? Forgive your boy. And she's like, Linda's like, and you think flowers are gonna fix all this? 
people. I thought ladies liked flowers. And Gunslinger Spunk continues his speech. But the point is, my troubles aren't yours. You're a good woman. You deserve better than that. But that man, he hurt my family. And I gotta do what I gotta do. And I can't let go of that. I wish I could, says Javier, but I can't. So I'll let you get on with your life. So Linda shares her perspective, then Javier lets her be. Later, he's close to finding a man that helped destroy his life. But Javi doesn't know where he's located still. He's hoping maybe he can ask a couple people in town. So these two girls come up to him like, hey baby, looking for some company? We don't bite. And Javier's like, I ain't looking for company, but I'm looking for a ride. Here's some bucks. So they give him a ride and armed with proper directions, Javier is on a mission. I guess that house on the cliff that that bank teller was telling him about, that's where he's going. But he'll need help getting to where he needs to go. So he's thankful his pet doesn't seem to lose his powers after the events of spawn issue number 350, unlike all the other hell spawns that did. So Javier's like, okay, let's do the damn thing. But you gotta stay over here. They ride, they park at a distance. That way he can slip into the house unnoticed. He walks another half a mile until he finds what he's looking for. The lights and the windows tell him someone is definitely home. Being powerless, he believes is actually an advantage because he knows his enemies have lost their power too. And because Gunslinger Spawn is known for being the lesser of the opponent, he's used to being resourceful and he likes that. So this guys and these guard dogs, they're outside. They're like, okay, the dogs are going crazy, barking. They're like, what the hell is this? Calm your damn bark down. Go out there and see what the the hell it is go sick them boys buy them coyotes well it ain't no damn coyote it's just javier finishing changing but not wanting to hurt them or draw attention to himself he holsters his gun then makes a break for it but i guess he's running so fast he trips on something or he trips on himself but he knows he can't keep pace for very long and he knows there's far too many of them for him to fight back so now we see this guy having a meeting with this dude and he's talking about like hong kong and the soul meetings and he's hoping he can convince hong kong to share their data collecting his benefit you know but these dogs keep parking he's like man these dogs better shut up and these dogs do shut up but this guy in a suit warns the other guy who's obviously the owner of the house about gunslinger spawn not knowing who he is and his lady coming to the bank and intel couldn't get quite the information on him they might be civilian but they're unknown and this guy recognizes him like aha uh -huh, that bastard is using a human host good that means he lost his powers too but he'll still make an attempt on us tell the boys to stay alert and start by finding that damn car they were driving she left he had to get a ride from them fine honeys in the bar but that lady linda took the car went back home i wonder if she'll come back into the story later so moments later the entire house goes dark the boss having lived for centuries now knows what this means he's ready but like some grim reaper Gunstick Spawn fixes his gaze on his target as the wind howls. The low, guttural growls the dogs for the chambers, waiting for their new master's command. And yet, none, including Gunstick Spawn, move from their spots. And this guy is like, I heard you come through the time rip. Knew you'll come after me just a matter of time. It was just a matter of when. Must have got yourself distracted with your superhero team. He's referencing the Scorch. Surely you got something to say, like, what'd you do to my man? Javier continues to stand silently, seething at his enemy. He won't dignify letting his man's name escape his lips. And we get to see what Javier did to his guard dog. And for Gunslinger Spawn is here for one thing and one thing only. He wants that ass. Guys, are you just gonna sit there and not say nothing at all? Well, you made a grave mistake coming here. Should have kept yourself hidden where it was safe. See, we've built an army while you kept playing the loner. And Amy, she knew how reckless. And before he can complete that sentence, Gunslinger Spawn's like, boy, shut up. But little does he know, someone's watching him from a distance. There's a bigger threat at play. And we don't know what it is. But then again, Gunslinger Spawn is not running no more. He's turning the tables. And that is the end of this issue of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 32. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. Also, link in description if you wish to add this comic book and or any of our other limited print rated comics exclusives to add to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Lastly, this video is sponsored by coffee, so if you'd like to buy a boy a cup of coffee, link in description or donate to the super thanks. But the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to Rated Comics YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.